So Suicide Squad is out. Sorry, not Suicide Squad. I mean THE Suicide Squad. And to nobody's surprise, it's actually really good. Well, I thought nobody would be surprised, but apparently there are a significant number of people who don't want to watch this movie for whatever reason. But I watched it, and I loved it, and I think you guys should watch it too. In my opinion, I think this is the most fresh and unique superhero movie that I've seen in a pretty long time. And it's insane that this is a sequel to what I would call the worst superhero movie that I've seen. And yes, this is very much a sequel. It directly follows Birds of Prey and the first Suicide Squad, but honestly, you don't really need to watch either of those movies to enjoy this one. The plot of Birds of Prey really doesn't matter. And yes, characters from the first movie appear, but you don't really need to worry about that either. This movie is simultaneously a sequel and kind of a soft reboot. Idris Elba, for instance, plays basically the same character as Will Smith's Deadshot. But this movie kind of pokes fun at that by giving him a foil that is another inversion of that same type of character. His father was a mercenary who trained his son to kill from the moment he was born. His father was a soldier who trained his son how to kill from the moment he was born. Are you having a laugh? I really enjoy that this movie knows exactly what it's doing and it's able to make fun of itself. Things aren't taken very seriously here. You disobey me, you die. You try to escape, you die. If we find out you have personalized license plates, you die. What? No. So yeah, if you've seen the original movie, you will get a little bit more out of this, but if you haven't seen it, you'll still like it just fine. Because this movie really feels like it wasn't tampered with by the studio. James Gunn really got to do whatever the fuck he wanted, and I think it works really well. This movie is super R-rated, and yeah, that will hurt your box office results a bit, but you can tell he really enjoyed using gore and violence in a cartoonish and over-the-top way. Also, this movie is not afraid to get weird with it. This is a movie where one of the best characters is Polka Dot Man. And you guys know that I love when comic book movies embrace the strangeness. And I still don't think that a lot of studios understand this. The best MCU properties are the weird ones, but we are still getting movies like Black Widow. This movie just oozes style. Where the first movie was trying to force a style that didn't work, this movie brilliantly utilizes its stylistic quirks to frame the movie. There are a lot of title cards that introduce each chapter, and on one hand I think the pacing of this movie feels a little bit off. Things start off really strong with an amazing opening scene that sums up the premise perfectly in a short amount of time and then subverts your expectations. But then the movie slows down quite a bit in order to properly flesh out the rest of our characters. This is an ensemble cast and there are a lot of characters here, and the movie does a great job of making each character matter. Everybody is lovable, which is not easy to do, but the movie does feel like it slogs just a little bit to flesh out everybody. I will say that this movie's framing device does make the movie feel like a full comic book story arc, and I think that's on purpose. Each title card is basically the title of a comic book chapter, and when I started looking at the movie in that way, it kind of excused some of the poor pacing for me. And plus, when you enjoy the scenes that you're watching, it gets a lot easier not to mind when things are a little more boring. And while I'm on the subject of my mild criticisms, I'd probably say this movie is not that funny to me. But as we know, humor is very subjective, I think the movie is funny, I just didn't laugh that much. And I don't think this movie's trying to be as goofy as the Guardians movies, but there are a few comedic moments that just didn't land for me. And this does strangely lead to some scenes where the comedy is meant to distract you from the logic of the film, and if the comedy doesn't really work, then the logic of the film suffers as well. For instance, there's a scene where the characters are stealthily taking out a camp of soldiers while also trying to one-up each other, and it was just a little distracting because they're making a lot of noise. So much noise that I was actually not able to register initially that they were trying to be stealthy. And scenes like this don't really ruin the movie for me by any means, and there are still funny scenes, but there were moments where the humor didn't land as much and it did pull me out of the movie in other ways. But I do think at the end of the day, the characters in this movie are really what drive everything. Harley Quinn is very fun to watch in this movie, that's kind of a given at this point. My theater was fucking losing their mind whenever she did anything. And I'd even say that Amanda Waller and Rick Flagg are a lot more interesting in this movie. I like that Waller is still the exact same character, but now her stoic demeanor contrasts perfectly with the insanity of this movie's premise. Polka dot man. What does he do, throw polka dots at people? He does. I'd say John Cena steals the show as this lawful, evil lunatic who has a distorted sense of justice. It's a very fun and different type of character. And as I said before, he serves perfectly as a foil to Idris Elba's character. Everything just works so well that I was constantly in this theater, watching the scenes and thinking to myself, this is a good ass movie. 
The movie's also shot really well, which sometimes you don't really see in superhero movies, which is a shame, but it's good to see here. The dialogue is funny and sharp, and the movie gives these characters time to actually pull at your heart a little bit. There are a lot of scenes that definitely solidify this movie as more of a soulful drama than the original. And it's weird because this movie has things that I'd say I wouldn't like in other movies. It has a lot of licensed music, but the music is used in ways that service the story instead of making the movie feel like a music video. It has a big dumb CGI monster in the climax, but the movie knows it's dumb and it's built up too naturally over the course of the movie, making the final battle really satisfying. Overall, I just think this is the most creative and stylish superhero movie that I've seen in a very long time, and I enjoyed it immensely. I'm already excited to watch it a second time, and at this point I really don't feel comfortable saying that DC has bad superhero movies because the last few, minus that new Wonder Woman, have been pretty good. But I'm gonna wrap this up right now and give THE Suicide Squad an 8.5 out of 10.